Hey guys, I'm at the Dundee Science Centre today. My name's Arthur and this is my rolling vlog. So, what to expect here as, what was that? That was pretty random. So I haven't got a clue of what to expect here as my experience of a science centre is the one in Glasgow, which I will be going to in the future. So this is really cool. So the objects here, well not not these the paper things over here, but these objects here. So if you So these things were all created using the three a 3D printer. Isn't that amazing? And all of these objects you can actually shape and mould yourself, which it's really interesting. Hey guys, I'm about to check out a show called Scrapyard Science. It'll be really interesting to see what that's all about. Some of the stuff you're going to use is normal paper, I guess. You don't have to always use normal paper. We can occasionally use pages from a magazine of a celebrity space. You know, like Black Box, but can it? Can it? We're going to do a couple of different challenges. Let's work. We're going to make a rocket that we can take home. We're going to make a rocket here that we can blast off. And we're going to see what's in my bin also. In my bin, I've got, well, I've got an awful lot of junk. And the most important type of junk I have in my bin are, well, is dramatically unsure where I'm moving that bit. This little guy. What is this? Polyethylene terephthalate, we just call it a PET bottle. And this little PET bottle is very strong when we need to keep juice and stuff in it, but when he's finished holding on to our juice for us, it really stays being strong. And when we chuck him out, he goes into landing. He's so strong that he takes a very long time to rot away into the soil. That air starts to squish together. It squishes together like a spring. This is like a pressure, air pressure. And it squishes together like a spring until finally that air all finds its way out. Now, in our rockets that we made before, was there a hole in the nose for the air to get out? There wasn't, was there? There was a hole in the bottom. So that air squeezed together and then pushed down out of the hole in the bottom. And as it pushed down, our rocket pushed down to go up, just like when we did it. Also, one of the main reasons why you have to wear a seatbelt when you go to the toilet in space because if you push some stuff down, that stuff is going to push you right back up again. Those are not sticking out over our rockets because as they blast off, and they will blast off, and it will be a surprise, we don't want to get a rocket plop right up the nose, right up the nose, or in the face. That would be quite sore. Now, when these blast off up the way, they go very fast. But when they fall back down, when they fall back down, they go quite slow. So you don't need to worry about getting bogged on the head by one. We'll be very sore. Now, I get her tiny thing right because Mary's not done his job. <laughs> now, who was the next rocket? Ah! Right, let's get some more water in here. Whoops, that's too much water. We don't want to put too much water in, otherwise our rocket goes off really, really quickly. Now, if we put in too much water, or if we make our bits of tablet too small, that means that our rocket blasts off way too quickly. These sizes of bits are just the right size. Now, let's have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Blast off! Oh, he's thinking about it. Oh, all that bubbly gas, all that carbon 
carbon dioxide squeezing up inside like a Coke bottle, ready to fizz. Whoa! Oh, look out below, well done! Whoa! So that show was really interesting and if you've got young kids they'll really enjoy it and I highly recommend you see it. What's interesting about this area is that all the experiments here is themed along the human body. So it's right next to where I showed you the 3D printer. So this bit here is actually quite educational, but it actually teaches you about the ear. For example, how the ear helps you with things like balancing, which is really cool. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is an eye experiment. So there's goggles here and looking through the, the goggles you should be able to see what's being magnified behind in front of the eye so this is what it actually looks like and it's magnifying this which is really cool and the one i was showing you was here so it's actually you can actually see that poster from the side here it's quite interesting as I'm going through here, I'm noticing how this entire place is fully wheelchair accessible. And at the moment, we have two floors, but at the moment, the first floor is getting renovated, but they have, an, have a lift or elevator, which will take you up to the second floor. So that's quite good. So they have various different eye goggly things here, which can simulate what having various forms of sight loss looks like. So I'll try and um, see if this works on my camera. So this is what cataracts would look like. Oh, if you can see that, it says cataracts. So if I put this over the lens, you should be able to see what that looks like. This one is for diabetic retinopathy. So this is what this one would look like if you had this form of sight loss. This one here is what glaucoma would look like if you had glaucoma. And this one here, as you can see, it's very hard to see with this form of sight loss. And this one, is muscular degeneration so with this one this is what this one would look like which as you can imagine would be really hard to see if this form of dis disability i actually think that this is really good and i'm quite surprised that it, it can it just gives you an insight and um, it's very inclusive about various forms of eye disabilities I had a great time at Dundee Science Centre. Now, I didn't have a lot of time to show you everything that the Science Centre has to offer. Um, and as I mentioned in my vlog that the upstairs is shut, so I will come back when it opens. I'll show you everything that the Science Centre has to offer. But for now, it's time for me to roll on to my next adventure. <laughs>